Well, how do that, chums? This I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I want to talk about the No Man's Sky Omega update, and I want to give a full review of how I feel about the No Man's Sky Omega update. Now, I keep saying the word update. Was it an update or was it an expedition with a couple of quality life improvements? That's the sort of stuff that we're going to deep dive into. So let's jump on over onto the old Tinterwebs and the patch notes for old Omega. Now, the very first thing that you notice inside of the Omega patch notes is it doesn't mention furthering or ending off the narrative of the four-part ARG arc that Sean has been alluding to that has been building up over the last year, 2023. Now, in certain interviews, Sean of the Murray said that that four-part arc, that four-part piece of work, was going to be put across 2023 and come to its final conclusion in 2023 at a penultimate decision that changes the outcome for the travellers within the side of No Man's Sky. So he had already bigged up Omega as being, perhaps, the last potential part of this four-part arc that has larger ramifications across the universe. Sadly, that's not what we've seen in this release. And also, we had a trailer inside of the Game Awards that showed some gnarly great big stations that were a bit overhauled, the interior and the exterior. And those two haven't come into fruition inside of the Omega updates and inside of these patch notes. Now we go on to the actual trailer for Omega. Let's just go and hit on up this quickly. I'm gonna have to turn off the volume, but that shouldn't be a problem, people. Oh, that's already muted. But yeah, if I make this a little bit larger, what do you notice that's a little bit strange about this image that we see right here in front of our eye peepers, people? One, it's not the starting planet for Omega, not that that should really matter, but this is one of those shroomy type hexagon plated planets. And I'm seeing a different type of flora on here that we don't see on those planets. And I'm also seeing beetles and droids on this planet when the only thing that actually appears on this planet are these little jellyfish things that look like small variants of these that just pop up and down all over the place so this planet doesn't exist inside of no man's sky and doesn't exist in no man's sky omega are we seeing a glimpse of the future here people is this going to be the sort of planet that we see during the four-part arc, are we going to go into an alternate realm where we are going to see flowers like this, a flora like this, and we're going to see beetles and droids sharing the world? I did wonder at first, well, maybe they might be pets of the actual players, and maybe, because this is a base and it's got these harvesters, maybe they've put these down as base parts. But I'm really not sure that that's what we're seeing here. I mean, I can't see a base computer in near proximity. And I'm, I'm, I'm having guesswork, to be fair. I mean, I don't see any cables going to any of these collectors anyway. So I think this has just been placed there as set dressing. And also, you've got one droid there, but you've got another droid sitting over there as well. So unless two players have got droid pets, I don't think that's the case. And also, you see other beetles. There's not just the one or two. Let me start it again, and I'd see what you mean. I think it is actual fauna on the planet, because there's a beetle right there. There's a droid right there. There's a beetle there. Another droid over there. Droid there. Beetle there. It seems to be the actual flora and fauna for the planet that we're seeing here. Not that there's just been placed by the base. There's another beetle flying off over in the distance over there, see? So, yeah. Also, there was a traveller there that seems to be wearing a jetpack and a cape at the same time. Just here. It, oh, he's underneath me right now. Uh, let me see if I can move it on just a tad. Oh, wrong way. Let's see if we can get him there. There he is, right there. Centre mass of the screen. So he's got a jetpack and he's got a... Um, like a, a, a cape on at the same time there, people. Isn't that weird? Isn't that gnarly? And we can't do that in-game either. So there's a few weird little oddities about this actual trailer that I'm like, well, that's not what we see in-game. This looks like it might be some sort of scripted, put-together planet that's sitting on maybe their dev instance or something. Or maybe it might be a glimpse of the future of what's to come. Because it's a bit strange, isn't it? 
bit strange. Indeed, it only it is. I guess it is. And there we go. There's the actual new runner ship that we're going to be getting, the Starborn Runner. But as this takes off and flies over the planet, you do see that there are a couple of other beetles flying about on this planet. So I think they are just the flora, the fauna for the actual planet in question. Okay, yes, I didn't see any more of those sort of like shroomy type things that we saw in the foreground. So maybe they were base parts. You know, it is an available base part, isn't it, through Quicksilver? So maybe that's what it was that we were seeing there, people. It just didn't look right at first. It just didn't set the actual right tones for me, you know? I still haven't come across these missions. I've been searching on planet surfaces, not found one. Not that I feel that they're overly all that engaging from what I've seen and screenshots that people have shared. So, the ability to own your own pirate dreadnought is a welcome one. It's more of a cosmetic one. The set dressing here, again, more of a cosmetic feel rather than anything that's going to change the game up. And they've also added in a new Atlas Parpy type quest, which I've tried to do, and I've got so far with it, and it feels like it's only been half implemented. And when I say half implemented, it feels like the first step has only just been implemented. Done a whole video on it. You have to give the actual Atlas wonders that you've found from your wonders catalogue. However, all my wonders got completely obliterated and vanished when I done the expedition from inside of the new console. Video there on me giving wonders to the Atlas and trying to move on the new Atlas path. Maybe I've done something wrong there. Let us know in the comments of that video. I guess. Now, it has been free on all platforms from inside of No Man's Sky. So all of these got a trial version. Now, funny enough, the trial version comes to an end around the same time as the optional milestone came to an end. And there was a game-breaking bug that when you actually completed and accepted Phase 5 rewards, it hung your game, soft-locked it completely. Yeah, completely suffocated, everyone saves. And I'm wondering, after speaking to Scottish Rod, because Scottish Rod came up with this idea, is maybe it was linked to this free trial. So perhaps when the free trial ended, at the same time as that ended, maybe they didn't want those that were on the free trial hitting up the full game. So maybe some sort of screen pops up for them to say, thank you for taking part in the free trial, do you want to buy this title? Maybe something like that happened on those platforms, but for all those that have bought it, we just got the soft lock. And I think that's quite an interesting sort of theory. Not that I can put it to the test or know for sure, but that does have the most feasibility. But what I don't get is how we managed to get so many bugs from previous launches into No Man's Sky Omega. It's like we now have the ability to own the Sentinel Pirate Dreadnoughts. Now, when we first got given the ability to have our own freighters, and they added in the ability to blow up freighters. If you blew up your own freighter or your mate's freighter or whatever, it just made loads and loads of instances of it spawn in and then your game crashed and hung and broke and blue screened. Then they put in these pirate dreadnoughts. You'd think they're think, hold on, they're going to blow these up again, aren't they? And they're going to have the same problem again, aren't we? You would have thought. You would have thought that would have then been on their test log forever for eternity. Nope. Nope. You can then blow up the Sentinel dreadnoughts and it crashes the game been patched now don't go trying that now it's been patched and fixed in experimental it will be on all platforms soon but at the same time why was it even in there it just seems that a couple of small embarrassing bugs from the yester year have made it into the game and inside of iteration and to me that feels like maybe a little bit of poor dev work Hello Games aside, I hate to say it, but I, I am wondering whether a lot more of the actual team now is moving focus over to Light No Fire and No Man's Sky is going... I think they've got this big update with the actual stations because we saw evidence of that inside of the trailer and I just feel that they're, they're tearing it into pieces. And whenever you tear something, you're always going to have rough edges. And I think that's what we're experiencing with some of these bugs, is the rough edges of that tear away. Just little loose ends that just have a bit of friction, bit of friction. Yeah, a little bit of AMSR there for you. And it causes those sort of bugs that we're seeing. So I just don't think the polishes are there on the edges of where all this sort of stuff would knit together. If they left it as one big update, would it have been more seamless? Don't know. You know. At the end of the day, some of the bigger updates that we've had have had the most bugs. So maybe that theory doesn't float. Something that's very odd about this image here is this construct over to the far side. Because 
we don't get shoulder pads like that for a player but it's it looks like a player model because it's wearing one of the backpacks and it's got the ai drone on the actual side there talamon so it looks like it's a player driven model if it's not a player driven model because you do get npcs appear using your echo locator at these actual freighters it could be an NPC model. The main reason I don't think it's an NPC model is that emote that he's doing right there with his hand looks like he's calling a pet over. It looks like the pet summoning emote. But his hand is odd too. He's actually got all five fingers. If you go to the appearance modifier and you change yourself to one of these auto phages, you already get three fingers. Well, you know, two fingers and a thumb. There he goes. Very much Spock-like. But his other hand is actually got a hook on it and oh, we don't get that sort of dress up for our npcs but you know like i was showing in the trailer earlier where we don't get planets like the planet that we saw there is that just a scripted player is it not really a player is it just some something that's been created just for this screenshot possible we just don't know are we seeing a glimpse of the future we might be possible it might be a little hint at what's to come, people. It might. So all this sort of stuff, it, it helps with speculation. I do love to speculate. And I do know that they have been putting things inside of these that have been quite sneaky. I mean, why else make it nice and big in the background so you can see this freaking guy nice and close up to say, ha, something new <laughs> on the sidebar over there, people. So it does make me wonder, it really does. And it was also like the name Omega. You know, they know that we're trying to close down the four-part arc inside the law, and they've called this Omega, which means the end. Is that just pressing a couple of buttons? Is that a little bit trolly? I don't know. Or was this supposed to be the, the last part, but then they've gone, oh, actually, no, let's keep this back for a bit. Let's keep that back for a bit. Because I honestly think that these new stations that we're seeing, when you see that new core that we're seeing inside of there as well, the new core looks very much Sentinel-esque, Sentinel whereas the old core looks like the life rafts that we found down at the Echo Camp. So I'm wondering whether there's going to be some lore tied into why we're seeing some stations that look very different different to the old stations and maybe it's got something to do with the station overrides as well maybe there's some real juicy stuff tied to these new stations that just isn't ready for us yet and i'm wondering whether that means that we might see a bigger update towards the end of this year the summer of this year is it going to be the last part of the four part arc and is it going to deliver something a little bit more special than what we're seeing right now i mean let's face it we didn't have a massive update in the whole of 2023 yes they added in echoes which was quite large but it didn't add much content there it was very surface level i know they added in a whole new freaking race but it's just sort of dressing that was that's like part what was that part three to the arg arc it was just a part and it's not the end so there we are that's my theory anyway people a bigger update than at least echoes in this year will it be as big as next that's the question coolio anyway we've got a new way to start expeditions and that new way to start expeditions has been pretty good i love the scorecard at the end that actually runs you down on actually what you've done and all the sorts of other stuffage and the fact that you can take things into the expedition with you but not only that you can export things out of the expedition with you the only thing is, the things that you can export out is rather limited. I really wanted to get those Echo Seeds and put them over to my Legacy Save so I could build that lore out that I've learnt. I haven't checked my catalogue to see if that lore has transposed over from the expedition into my main save. Fingers crossed that it has. But yeah, some oddities happened. I mean, it wiped out my freaking Wonders catalogue. I don't know what's going on there. And the eggs that I got from the optional milestones, I couldn't actually put them over to my other save to keep their actual incubation time so they're ready to hatch straight away. If I do go and get them, I have to claim them from the Quicksilver guy, and I don't know whether they come with the incubation time. And also, my Sentinel Quad Dog Pet, when I got it, there was a bug at the time. Yeah. And I'm not allowed to ride it. I can't ride mine. Everybody else can ride theirs. Mine, for whatever reason, is still broken. And it never got patched, even though the patch came out that was supposed to fix that. It didn't. So, yeah, I still can't ride my quad dog pet. But anyways, 
Yep, the ability to own your own sentinelized fleet now, and also your own sort of freighter, is pretty darn lovely. I mean, yes, we can have the frigates prior, but look how awesome that looks with a full setup there. If you want to go full on pirate now, you can do that to your heart's content. Scottish Rod has built an amazing freighter base. I've done a tour of his freighter base. I put a link up there. Hopefully, it's live now. You can go hit that one up and go see that. But that's freaking great. That was fun going around that thing. Lots of inspiration there. I do like the fact that they've put things closer to the actual planet's orbit now that you can see in the sky that adds elements of interest i'm hoping that they do that inside of normal play i mean we saw it inside of the expedition i haven't seen it happen on planets as yet inside of normal play but hopefully it will make an appearance that'd be pretty nice but yeah other than that with the atlas path rework yes i've added a bit more color into it now i was thinking about hitting up a pc save on pc experimental or on my PC, and playing through and trying to get my PC save to the same point as my PlayStation 5 save. And I wanted to redo the Atlas path. What's the problem with that? You've got to learn all the Atlas words. How many Atlas words are there? There's like six to eight hundred odd words. I can't remember. It's a heck of a lot. But you've got to learn them in drips and drabs. And I want to learn them before I go start doing the Atlas path. Because I want to go over all the lore again and see if there has been any breath of new life. And see if the choices do great, greatly impact me or permanently impact me on that save. I don't want to mess around on my PlayStation Legacy save. I want to do all that on my PC save. But to get there and to learn all those Atlas words, it's going to put me to sleep learning them all for a second time. I kind of wish that Hello Games would add in a new currency and call it like gold silver or something. Or yeah, quick gold or something. Yeah, yeah, quick gold, not gold silver yeah quick gold and maybe you pay for it with real money and you can pay for all the atlas words you know the equivalent of like what a pound or something i'll be up for that or you can pay another pound and learn all of the race words pay another pound and learn all the echo words heck yes i would do that to save me the time because that was like watching freaking paint dry Unless Hello Games want to go in there and fine-tune things, like when you step on these little message orbs, maybe it gives you 30 words rather than one poxy word. Speed it up a bit, make it a little bit more fun, get past learning the language that little bit quicker. It's like if you've got the translator technology right now, it does fudge in nothing, really. But if you, say, put in that translator technology, plus it's boost in technology, maybe that's what will make it so when you step on one of these, you learn 30 words instead of one. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'd install the translator tech then. I do love that picture. That's freaking lovely. We've got some awesome rewards inside of this expedition. And the expedition is where most of the content came from, to be fair for this. Other than owning the actual pirate dreadnoughts or running the expedition from a console, there wasn't much else brought over into the game. I would say in comparison to all the other updates that we've had previous Februaries, this one has probably been the least update heavy up update of all of them. It's added a bit of content, but nothing in comparison to, say, Companions, or Sentinel, or even Living Ship. It, it, it's felt a little bit lacklustre in the actual update, but the actual expedition was freaking awesome. The only thing is, is they went and put this into the experimental branch for those on PC Experimental to do some bug testing. Yes, it did reduce a couple of freaking progress blockers, and it made for a more seamless approach for those that are running the expedition. But at the same time, it did put out some very heavy spoilers inside of the community. And Hello Games' own words was this would be a version of the expedition, but it turned out that it was a complete copy and paste. There was no version, really. It even had the same planets. So it did spoil quite a lot for the actual community. And a backlash came upon the actual creators for putting it out there. Next time Hello Games put something into the experimental branch, I've been talking to Scottish Rod on this, and I think he's come up with a great idea on how to satisfy people, is only put it available to my members. I put it available to my members, and then once it's out there for everybody to play it, then I will put all those videos that I've set to members only to public facing. So if you do want that early access and you do want the spoilers, you know, you can jump in, pay a couple of quid or whatever, and you can see it if you really want to. I know it puts it behind a paywall, but at the same time, 
it's not in the public domain and I'm not going to upset the public domain. It is one of those things. So it can be a perk for those that are actual backers of the channel. But not only that, I can put it all live day one as soon as everybody can play it and you've got the whole playthrough there. Makes perfect sense. I think that way is probably the best way, to be fair. So yeah, I do like this new console. I do love the end scorecard that tallies up on how you've done at the end. I think that's pretty darn freaking nice. I like the ability to actually scroll through all of your different open missions using left and right. That makes perfect sense. There's a lot of things that they've added in quality of life, things that have been sorely needed. And I'm very happy that they've put them in. And the rewards this time around, the new helmet, the new sort of backpack, the new, the new staff... It's all brilliant. Love it. Really like what they've done with the actual rewards in this one. The rewards for this actual expedition, I think, have been on par with the very first expedition where we got the golden alpha vector. I, I really like the new ship. The new ship looks freaking lovely. And I think I will be using it for a little while yet to come. These new missions, haven't come across them. I do like the fact that they've got a bit of blurb with them. But I think it would be nice to see these sort of missions given to the NPCs inside of our settlements. So at least it gives us another reason to go to our settlements and interact with our actual settlers and pick up missions to help them in their day-to-day -day life. I really do hope this comes over to our settlements. Hello Games, if you're listening, put it over to the settlements. Make some of the NPCs interact with us in this sort of way so we can run missions from our settlements. And maybe that might help make them feel a little bit happier because they're always miserable sods at um, our settlements aren't they at the end of the day it'd be nice to be able to do something about that miserableness inside of our settlements twitch drops were highly welcome not that i jumped in or partaked this is the end scorecard and i love this this reminds me of going to zap attacks and quasar and getting top gun it actually tells you how many people you've taken out and how many times you got shot or how many times you had to respawn and it gives you a lack like, an assessment really like all that i think that's freaking groovy and it gives those that have run the expeditions another reason to rerun them during redux times and bring back a load of nanites and quicksilver as long as the ending off works properly which i'm wondering whether that had something to do with the free period of play but there we go people i honestly do think this was a very shallow update but a very content heavy expedition does that quite balance it out? Well, I know now that I've done the expedition that the only thing that I want to do is rerun the Atlas Path on a fresh save. But to do that, there's a lot of boring, busy work in learning all the Atlas words. Do I want to get myself a pirate freighter? Not on my legacy save. Put too much work in my freighter already. It's so hard to get an S-Class. That re-rolling to get an S-Class just isn't fun. It's not fun. So again, there's nothing really there content heavy wise to bring me back in to play and to really get my teeth into this update if you want to call it an update. I mean, myself, I would say the best part of this whole update was the expedition. The update I could take or leave it, to be fair. There wasn't much there for me when you look at it that way. However, if I did hit up a new save and I did play as a pirate and I did want to upgrade that freighter, there's quite a lot for me to do there. I've got to build a new freighter base. I've got to get all the modules. I've got to get all the bulkheads. I've got to try and get an S-Class one. But is any of that fun? Is running derelict freighters over and over again to get the S-Class modules fun? It's not. It really isn't. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I dread. I dread getting a dreadnought. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> on a on a new save if i was a new player coming into the game this is all great stuff but for legacy players that have already got their freighter and already got it established it's not the easiest thing to transfer or to get it back up to speed and seeing all this lovely stuff is going to be lovely if i was going to play through again but i don't want to learn all the atlas language all over again in the way that it is currently in game they need to speed up the atlas learning of words and also all the other races and all the echo words as well learning the echo words i did a whole playlist i called it end game content and if you try watching that playlist it's like and that's watching it it was worse playing it trust me just flying from camp to camp to location to location talking to the same autophages running the same missions oh my days if that's end game 
it's it's not a challenge it the challenge was staying awake hello games so please try to gamify the end content of no man's sky a little bit more because it really needs it i mean when you first come into game when you first pick up no man's sky it's overwhelming you've got so much to do and then the middle piece is so overwhelming you've got so much to do and then the end is just so lackluster dull no loop no nothing the end game needs more it needs more of a challenge it, it almost needs a second breath of life it's like when you play world of warcraft you get to level 40 and you think okay this is this is pretty much the game you hit level 40 bang end game kicks in it's like a completely another game it's like oh my god this is this is freaking amazing we haven't got that yet in no man's sky there's nothing there really end game the end game is just sitting here twiddling our thumbs waiting for you guys at hello games to pump out another expedition or another update that hopefully pulls us back but the actual core engine of the game feels like it hasn't overly been touched for a long time so the four core um, core pillars which is explore you've got fight survive and trade the fight and trade kind of got a bit of a look with outlaws with a bit of trading and smuggling, but it's very base level. The whole sentinels and the outlaws again added in a little bit more fight. And we've got reworked guns and how things work with haptic feedback and a few more modules, which is lovely. And also a new sentinel menace, which are the corrupted sentinels. Great. But you haven't really overly touched on the, the, the survive aspect, really, or the explore. We need a bit more of that going on, especially at end game. We still need to be able to explore these planets, find new modules, find things that are more customized, more sort of end gamey content. Look at that end game loop. Now, yes, you've put in the new Atlas path, but it only feels like the first two or three steps. It doesn't feel like it's a fully fledged out thing yet. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe I've done something wrong. I don't really know because there's not much to really go by. But you know what? Overall, what am I going to score this? Hmm, it's a tricky one. On the PC Experimental, I gave the Expedition a flat 8. I said it was great. Um, but the thing is, the milestones inside of it were very much set pieces. that They've all been done before in previous Expeditions. There was no real new milestones there. Although the rewards were brilliant and the lore was brilliant, what you actually did to get all that was very samey to what we've already done. There was nothing really new there. So I scored it an eight for that reason. And I, I think I'm gonna remain with that eight for the actual expedition side. And for the actual update side, because it's so small in comparison to previous Februaries, and Sean of the Murray said, 2024 is going to be a big year. Well, to start with, uh, next year is going to be a really big year for No Man's Sky. Like you said, I've been working on it for 10 years now, and I still really love it, still really enjoy it. I would have thought each update that we get would be bigger than, say, 2023. I would say this update, Omega, is fairly on par with what we got last year, Utopia. With the Utopia Speeder, new ship, new expedition, but Utopia also brought it to PlayStation VR 5 and gave it a bit of a visual overhaul, and also I think it came out to Mac shortly then on after. There was a lot that happened around Utopia that you could kind of forgive the, um, you know, the depth of the actual update. And forgive is quite strong. I mean, at the end of the day, Hello Games is doing all this for free, so I can't overly complain. It's a bit of a double-edged sword. But when Sean of the Murray says that 2024 was going to be a big year for No Man's Sky, and they announce Light No Fire at the same time, you would think that Hello Games would want to make the community feel kind of safe with No Man's Sky still. But to have quite a small, tiny update with a decent expedition, doesn't sort of bode well when you compare it to previous years and see that the updates in previous years were bigger than the update in 2024. Normally the first update of the year kind of sets the pace for the rest of the year. And with this one being quite lacklustre, I'm wondering whether the updates this year are also going to be lacklustre. But at the same time, I still have confidence that Hello Games are going to pull something out of the bag, mainly because there's just so many loose ends of the thread right now when it comes to the Void Mother and everything else that's going on inside of the game. 
then I think this year is still going to be an exciting year and it still has potential to be a big year. It's just I think that big update is going to be delivered in smaller updates and where they've torn it, I think we're going to see the same level of bugs that we've seen inside of this update because of that sort of breaking it down. So that's what I think, people. And overall, this update, I'm going to score it. It's above average, in my opinion. But I don't think it's quite up to the mark of previous updates I don't, in size or scale. And I have actually put a poll out on my community page. And let's just go and have a quick look at that poll before I give my final score and thoughts. OK, jumps. Right. Well, let me just put myself over on the side of the screen. There we go. Let's see if we can zoom this in just a teeny bit more. There we are. Right, okay, so I actually asked what you guys thought of the bugs on the side of the Omega update. And 48% of people said, well, it could have been worse if they didn't put it to early access in the experimental first, which is true. So there is that to be fair, people. And even with the early experimental, embarrassing bugs remained 15%. Seven years on and the major multiplayer bugs remain and new bugs. 19%, including like the Nexus shaking like freaking mental and ships getting stuck in the entrance way. Still see that from time to time, people. Definitely see that from time to time. And also the appearance of similar bugs from previous. 4% say that does feel a little bit sloppy. Maybe that's harsh, but yeah, I only get a certain amount of characters I can put in here. So yeah. Yeah, got a feeling all updates will have this same level of bugs, which I've said throughout this sort of review and synopsis, I think that is going to be the case. And whether it's going to be put into experimental again, I think it may, um, which then I've got to think about how I deliver that content to my community. So yeah, I might do another poll further to the time. Should I put this out for everybody? Should I make it members only? And see what people say. Uh, and I'll play it by ear. I go by the consensus and I will try to mark everything with experimental in the actual title, which I did last time. And I also kept my thumbnail spoiler three, but I still got a little bit of backlash of people saying you're spoiling it for the rest of us. It's difficult being a content creator. So yeah, maybe I'll do a poll or maybe I might just do it for members. I'm really not sure as yet. But anyway, I did ask the community, where would you score this? So, 6% of people would score it between 90 and 100 as amazing. 70 and 90%, well, 24 people would rate it in between 70 and 90. And then the between 50 and 70 was the highest, which is 51% of people. And then below 50, 13%. And then, yeah, this, this update is the worst, below 30, and 6% hit that up. Now, I've had 349 votes. So it's quite a decent portion of the community. And you know what? I would have to agree. Although that the the actual update itself, I would give it a flat 80. I think it was brilliant, the actual expedition. But where I would stage that expedition, the actual Omega expedition, is in my top six. And considering that there's 12 there, it's kind of mid-table. And the only reason I'd score it around there, even though the rewards are great and the lore was great, there wasn't a lot that transitioned over into the actual game. And also, it just felt done to death. All the milestones felt a little bit... Although I wouldn't say they were boring and I wouldn't say they were overly grindy or drawn out, there was nothing really new there. There wasn't nothing that went, oh, that's a new milestone. I haven't done that before. They are all fairly samey to what we've seen before. And the actual update itself for content, I feel was pretty lacklustre. I know we got the ability to own our Sentinel Dreadnoughts, but there still is so much random work into that, reloading your saves. How's that freaking fun in trying to get your S-Class Freighter? There needs to be a better way to get that S-Class Freighter. For example, the quicker you actually take out all those guns and the quicker you get aboard, maybe that spawns in your S-Class Freighter. If you can take out all the engines and all the guns in under a minute and get aboard, it's a guaranteed S. That would be freaking great. If you get in there and it's just over a minute, but it's under two minutes, it's an A-Class, for example. And they could stage it however they wanted, but they could have made it more fun that way, couldn't they, really? Uh, so those that have actually upgraded their ships and gone to town in getting a super sweet ship have got a super sweet chance of getting an S-Class freighter. That would have made more sense to me. That would, have, that would have ticked an extra box for me. But they haven't. They've left it the same as it was before. They've made it so you have to reload and reload your save over and over again. 
that's dead gaming time. That's taking time away from me, my family, and the things that I could be doing. You know, and it, it's just, it's just, it's just poor. So I'm going to give this update a 60. I'm going to give it overall a 60. The Omega update, 60 out of 100. And that might feel a little bit harsh. I mean, it's not quite as high as 70, but it's above average. It's above average. It's, it's definitely not below average. It's still a great update. It's still delivered in a fair bit of stuff. And it's tickled the old taste buds for more to come in the year. I mean, I honestly do feel ship racing could be on the cards alongside these new stations. It's just a shame that there wasn't more hints of what's to come or some sort of roadmap of what's to come. Because at the moment, it just feels like they've cut it into pieces and we don't really know what the vision ahead is. We know that the stations are on the, on the cards, but we've known that for over a year because they were accidentally left in the game files. So there is that, people inside the viewer verse. Anyways, so that's pretty much my rating. I'm giving it a 60. A 60 out of 100. Let us know what you would score the overall update. Although uh, the best thing about it was the Omega update, uh, the Omega Expedition. And that I think is still worth an 8 out of 10, so an 80 on its own. It, in comparison to all other expeditions. Normally I do the review separately, but because this update is solely the expedition... I feel that the actual content part of the update brings down some of the polish and shine from that expedition and also the amount of bugs that we had despite it going to experimental and the spoilers that came with it has also lowered my review somewhat people so I'm setting it as a 60 and that that could be communication issues from hello games that have also affected that and been accounted for in that because this is my experience with actually bringing content to the verse and this time because bringing content to the verse actually also brought conflict from the community as well and that was actually given and driven by the way that this was put out i have to reflect that in there to some degree so i'd imagine if i wasn't a content creator from this i probably would have rated this maybe a 70 if i was a player like you guys out there so just to put that into content I think a 70 is probably fair for this, but I've marked it down a bit because of the position I'm in. Anyways, that's everything that I've got for you. Hopefully this is a fair and balanced review, and hopefully you can see that I am still very excited for the year to come, because I think that this ARG, once it is completed, it might even result in a rebalancing of the game. I'm wondering whether there might be a bit of a reset coming in, 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 this, in this year, but I can't say for sure. Who knows, if they start asking us for save files or anything like that, then I'm going to start getting proper excited. But we shall see. We'll see, what this, we'll see where this year takes us. But because February, I feel, is the update that sets the pace for the year, I'm not going to set my expectations on any of the other updates as being any higher than what we saw in February. Apart from when it gets to the summer update this August, I think it has a potential to be a bigger one than what we're used to. Will it be as big as Origins? Will it be as big as Next? I really don't know. I've got high hopes because last year was very sort of lacklustre. So they've had almost a whole year of sort of mini updates. Now, hopefully, there's a bigger one around the corner. Anyway, there we are. That's everything I've got for you. Salute Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.